Hi, this is Jeffrey Fox again. This is the uh, discussion of the transportation, autonomous vehicles, automobile industry, and the transformation into the mobility industry. This part is the section on actually the cars and vehicles and driving technology itself. And we're here we have the sub part on, which is the introduction to this section. Okay, there we are. Let's get going. All right, so if we look at this actual whole um, section on the self-driving and vehicle part of the system, then we have the following topic, some sort of introduction, the future of auto, some introduction to ride hailing, which is done in more detail in the following section on transportation systems, uh, some discussion of the trade-off between personal owning of vehicles and self-driving, a rather trivial comment on self-cleaning cars, just to show everything is self, and everything is uh, AI-dominated, automated. Uh, then a mu an interesting discussion of the fact of the substantial funding possible in medical transportation, which is covered in the US by Medicaid and has special needs, which can be well serviced by the right hailing industry. Then we go to the Society of Automobile Engineers and their fancy classification of different self-driving methods. And then a little discussion of Gardner on what they think the future is of self-driving. Then we get to a more technology section on deep learning for self-driving. We start off with NVIDIA's uh, well-known contribution there, other players, the role of simulation, and, in uh, learning to, to self-drive, maybe to teach the program to, to drive. The general discussion of AI, um, discussion of um, Waymo, Cruise, NVIDIA, and General Motors and the status of self-driving. Then finally, we just come back to the actual electrical power part of things, e-autos and trucks and drones and robots for transportation. So let's get going, thank you. All right, so here is a summary from a Business Insider of the future of the automobile industry. And um, as we look at transformations, it's worth noticing that the auto demand is actually falling. Uh, it's meant to fall 3% in 2019. Um, and that's because of these um, trends, like people can actually not bother to buy a car. They just use ride hailing. And of course, Uber, whereas the number of cars made is going down, um, of course, also one part of it, they're going down, they're changing, they're becoming electrical, they're becoming self driving. And then we have these uh, big so called mobility companies, pure mobility companies. Everything is meant to be mobility, but these are the purest forms of ride hailing Uber, Lyft, DD Churching. And they have grown, they're growing in size and they're. Whether these companies survive or which of them survive is not clear, but it's relatively clear that right hailing technology wise is going to, to survive because every, everybody I know thinks it's a good idea. And it's disruptive because it is changing not only the automobile industry, the taxi industries, and things like that. Um, I will mention later on that around half of today's car owners think they won't want them own a car in 2025. And um, given that, well, what, what do you do if you make autos? Well, you better decide what the future is. Well, one of the futures is mobility services. And that includes both the service, which ride hailing gives, but also the service, which the all the sensors and all the computers and the routers and the, and the drones flying over, finding out what's going on. That's the transportation system service. So that's a big market, which not so many players are in that market. Um, okay, well anyway, by 2030, the ride hailing is meant to be 285 billion, quite large. Um, it's um, blown up by a factor of eight from 2017. Um, and also, not only does um, ride hailing provide a threat, but also autonomous vehicles provide a threat because you can use autonomous vehicles over a longer time interval. Um, a car with an owner 
can't be driven unless you have the owner. But a car without a driver can be driven continuously. So you can actually use your uh, automobile, you can subcontract your automobile to a right handing company for, for self driving when you, when you want to. Um, okay, so that says that um, according to this estimate, um, autonomous vehicle, not only is right hailing very popular, but autonomous vehicle right hailing could be a quarter of the uh, mobility in a 10 years time. I doubt if it's five years time. Um, so one advantage of this for the automobile companies is they you don't need drivers. Therefore, the fact that the ride hailing companies already have drivers is not a big advantage to the ride hailing companies. They, of course, still have visibility and market share and things like that. Um, anyway, the global autonomous vehicle taxi market is meant to be 2 trillion by 2030. Um, well, that's interesting how you compare 2 trillion with 285 billion. I'm a don't I don't think they should be quite as big, big a difference there. So that just says that different people estimate the same thing, related things in different ways. So it's worth a bit more study. All right, is just uh, well here is um, a plot of um, the consumer view of mobility, which I already quoted essentially on the previous slide. Um, it is. Um, what customers think they'll, how they'll be driving in 10 years time. And they're saying they want self-driving cars. Uh, and if you look at that, we see at least overall, a quarter of the people want it now, one year from now, and 65, two thirds want it 10 years from now. And that fraction is um, more or less not similar overall countries, although it's bigger in China. And smallest in for these people here in France, uh, although France isn't that much different from the other European countries. U.S. is actually nowhere near as big as China, but it's actually bigger than anybody in Europe. Here is a few more <coughs> numbers. Here's this thing about cars. Total number of cars on the road. This is new cars minus retired old cars. And we see the total number uh, is, this is not the number built. The total number on the roads is meant to decline slightly. It's, um, here we are, it's around 265 to 266 now, 29, 2020, no 2019. It's meant to go up slightly. And then decrease. And here is uh, another plot of the um, consumer preferred mode of transportation. And here we have the autonomous ride hailing at 27%. We had that number in a previous slide. And uh, here is the number wanting a personal car. It's sort of interesting, it's really dropped from 82 to 54%. Public transportation is hanging in there, slightly increasing. Um, Taxis, for some reason, are still there. I don't believe taxis were, and taxis and car sharing are just variants of the ride hailing industry, down with non obviously sensible um, um, technology. If you look at the um, electrical power um, investment for cars, you can see Volkswagen is actually putting a lot more money in it to Tesla, even though Tesla is perceived to be the leader. And actually, Tesla is worth more as a company than Volkswagen at the moment. It overtook Volkswagen a few days ago at the, at the, at the 100 billion market cap um, size. And by the way, Tesla is far bigger than Ford. Um, it's currently around four or five times Ford. Although it's, guess it's almost, it's multiplied by a huge factor, almost 50% has gone up in the last two days. It, this, the value of Tesla is a bit, um, bit flaky. Um, we look at ride hailing, what companies there are. Well, we all know Uber and Lyft. And these are Uber 67, Lyft 30, the other is 3%. So Uber and Lyft dominate in the US. If you go to other countries, you'll find um, Ola from India 
and DD from China. And, and in Europe, there's a whole set as well. And if you look at um, Ford, which is a you know really, at least in Wall Street's point of view, on the way out as a company because its market value is similar to Uber, though it's been here forever. I mean, Ford created the car, Henry Ford. So I mean, it's amazing to see that. Uh, these giants of the past are not surviving in this new world. It's really quite remarkable. And here we have um, what we ha what Ford thinks are the components, and it's good to be thinking of what's in the mobility industry: the supply, uh, which is the system and the vehicle, the operations, managing the fleet, uh, making them all work together, and then we need the users. Demand customers and services, and um, let's see what we have on the next slide, which is uh, the last part of, of this. So we can see that uh, Uber and Lyft are um, pretty big. It has 91 million users for Uber and uh, 21 million for. Um, Lyft, so Lyft is quite a lot smaller, um, but actually DD is much bigger, presumably because it, it's, it dominates Ch China. Uh, Uber used to have a China operation, it sold it to DD. Obviously, the running, you know, operating um, a non-Chinese company in China, we know from all various publicity, is not so easy. And DD is 90% of the of the uh, Bookings in, in China. Grab is in Mal from Malaysia, sort of interesting. I've not heard of Grab before these notes here. Uh, and it has 100 million users. So it's sitting there with the size of Uber. Bolt is a European company, and it is 15 million users. And if we look here, we have various um, market value notes Uber. Lyft is much as a quarter of Uber, that reflects the size. DD is roughly the same as uh, Uber. Uh, when I make these, made these notes, Tesla was the same as Uber. Now Tesla's much, sorry, uh, much bigger. It's more like um, probably 100 and, $180 billion. So it's gone up almost a factor of four. Um, so here is a plot of how Uber's um, ridership is growing. Remember, it was around the 20 billion in, in the in 20 million in the previous slide. So here we have a little more detail showing its progress in 2019. Also, how much money it's getting. It's probably originally I don't know what it was smaller, maybe because it really cut prices to get itself into the market and. Um, of course, all of these companies lose money initially. That's the nature of um, startups. And uh, so this, in, this increased users and increased price per ride, <coughs> or price per rider, is important. And they're looking at going into the rental market by um, adding rental to the possibilities of the things you can do with your app. Um, Notes here that actually labor is an important cost for rental car companies, $15 per reservation, that's pretty high. And so if you can somehow automate all of that, then that's um, good. Maybe you know if you really wanted to drive a car, you could have a self-driving car, drives itself out to your, um, where you get off the airplane, and then you jump in this and drive off, pretty good. Actually, it might even start off self-driving in the, Nasty driving there, you say big airports, pretty bad to drive and you probably wouldn't want to drive there. So the fact if you could um, um, stop that, that's probably good. Anyway, so that's sort of a possible view of the future. Here is a rather silly comment which I found about Uber and self-cleaning cars. And um, it was revealed by a patent which is Service Business Insider discovered, and it's meant to clean autom autonomous vehicles between rides, detect, detect your cell phone, which you left in the car, 
and um, of course Uber is Uber's a bit unclear what it's doing. And obviously it's a huge effort itself in um, autonomous vehicles and self-driving, which somehow got a little derailed because they had an accident in Phoenix. Um, you can ask how I can spend all this money. So I have an interesting experience in Australia where I, I, I got on a sort of ride-hailing ride, actually done through Uber, and the person in the, in the car had Uber, um, DD, Ola. That's the three uh, organizations it worked for. And I asked which he, um, which he, uh, which the, the right hailing uh, driver liked best. What he said, uh, if you take um, Uber, it takes 30%. Uh, the other two take 15 and 5% respectively. Which do you think I like? So the fact that Uber takes a pretty large fraction of every ride and it plows that back into research. So that's actually wonderful for research and the industry. It's not so wonderful for the drivers, so maybe that's not sustainable, who knows. Uh, here is an amusing discussion of non-emergency medical transportation. And so if you, you know, public health is a hugely expensive operation. And um, transportation is meant to cost the health system $150 billion. You know, when you look at these things, you realize how these things which everybody does, because everybody gets ill, and everybody has to either go to hospital or just have your um, medications, your refill of your prescription delivered. And uh, so anyway, so this an NEMT, non-emergency medical transportation, is a Medicaid benefit, so it can be charged or insurance. And uh, both Uber, which to its thing, which it calls Uber Health, Lyft has Lyft Concierge, and they have MEMT solutions, which you can access and according to Uber Health, it's a $15 billion a year uh, opportunity. And uh, Ford also has an entry called Go Ride, and um, obviously this is an active area of competition. Okay, so here's a little more detail on Uber Health and um, what it's going to be doing. Um, we have actually here a comparison between Lyft and Uber with some of the partnerships they've done. Obviously, the way you get this set up, you go to major insurance companies or hospital systems and you arrange that uh, you are the preferred vendor for a certain type of capability because non-emergency -medical, non medical transportation is a well-established, clearly important um, uh, uh, service. There's this $150 billion, which comes because people miss appointments. Um, but of course, some of those missings are not due to screwed up transportation. Probably most of them are due to other things, being ill or something, or, or, or somehow delayed or some screw up. And then uh, we have the medication delivery coming along and that we will find later in these slides. That that's an area that drones are targeting as well. And uh, then, because of whether Uber will expand to or is expanding to offer drones as well as, as auto uh, cars is uh, that could certainly that's certainly consistent with the, with the, the mo uh, with a mobility company. Mobility companies have to address all parts of mobility, and drones and cars address different aspects of mobility. Um, and that interesting comment here is that. Um, uh, if you actually have your medications delivery, you actually are healthier because you keep to your required uh, pill dosage in a more efficient fashion. And um, that's a study from Kaiser. And um, so this is almost seems at some level as a rather trivial comment, but the numbers are so big that it's, I think, uh, non-trivial. This next slide is a rather different issue. And there's this famous Society of Automobile Engineers, which has diligently decided um, to find five levels of uh, self-driving, where zero is no self-driving, and five is total self-driving. 
which means whatever the weather, whatever the situation, the car will self-drive. And, and well, it does say there has to be a situation where a human could do it. So that means it doesn't do miracles, it just does what any human can do. Uh, I think at the moment we're in three, conditional automation, uh, or maybe two to three, either conditional or partial. Um, partial is probably what a, say a realistically a Tesla is today. Um, namely for most of the time there, there's a real driver and that's aided by the car when making useful remarks. There are some times like uh, driving in a cruise-like cruise, cruise -like situation where you can actually do conditional automation that the car drives itself and uh, hopes the human will intervene if it, the car makes a mistake or can't, doesn't know what to do. Um, here we have, you know, what's who does what. We have the system, the human, and um, so, and this tells you how, what the system can do, how many different modes it can cope with. And level four says there is self-driving and it's just not under all circumstances. Here, level five is everything, all driving modes. So, Elon Musk has announced that Tesla will support level five essentially now. And nobody really believes him, but it probably is somewhere between the three to four will be supported with a modern Tesla, because each Tesla has more sensors or different, better sensors uh, as they come along. And so the older Teslas can't do as much as the newer Teslas. Um, okay, here is some comments from Gartner, which point out their skepticism. Um, here we have various this is the so-called hype, hype cycle, which has relevant um, things for this particular section. We have level four driving here, level five driving here, delivery drones here, and flying vehicles here. And the things with um, these um, little triangles are not for 10 years. So this says Gartner. It doesn't say there will be self-driving even at level four until 2029 or later. <coughs> does think it's very important. And does actually say it's in some sense quite mature because it's gone past the inflated expectation and is heading down into the, you know, the trough of realism or disillusionment. Um, but it hasn't really made that up here, which means it's pretty well established and we're just in the um, productization stage. And level five is way back here. It still even hasn't been fully hyped. And um, I know, I think most people today would say Gartner is not correct, even though they, Gartner says they're correct in their last report. We'll have to see what they say in their next report, which uh, comes out in August, the hype cycle. I'm pretty certain that AI will be ready in much less than 10 years. So it's pretty solid now. Uh, what what uh, has to be done is to look at all these special cases and and get uh, make certain you have the right set of sensors and things like that. It's more the system issues, not the core technology. The core technology is probably good enough to do what you want to do. Um, okay, here's the. Last slide here, which is um, something which uh, Gardner always does for that as a company to the previous slide. The hype cycle, it has a priority matrix, which basically tells you when something will happen. And here we have autonomous driving, all up in this five to ten, four, greater than 10 year um, classification. The delivery drones, are actually here in five to 10 years. And the flying autonomous vehicles are down here. Notice, this is transformational. These flying vehicles are of moderate importance. And yet even the light cargo delivery drones, which is actually, say, how people are delivering 
the drugs today, and also it's what presumably Amazon expects to be delivering some of their stuff in the near, that one, one day, or maybe that one hour food delivery or whatever they do, that will be done by drones, I think. And so that's not, it's interesting, it's not viewed as transformational. All right, so that's the end of this introduction to the uh, mobility industry emerging from the, from the um, deconstruction of the original automobile and transportation industries. Uh, thank you very much.